morning, girls, and welcome to Grace Point Kids Online. I'm hoping that you had a fantastic, awesome week and that you are ready for another lesson in our series about um, blossoming in God's garden. <laughs> now, boys and girls, if you have just joined us for the very first time, I would love for you to let us know who you are and where you're from. You can email me at liana at gracepoint.ca.za or ask your parents to connect with us on WhatsApp, our Grace Point WhatsApp messages, and then we will connect with you. The number will come up. Now, boys and girls, <laughs> if, if you have had a birthday this week, I know that you are saying, stop talking, stop talking, and let's go to the birthday board. I want to see if, if my name's on there. <laughs> well, let's not wait anymore, and let's go and see who had a birthday this week. I'll be back with you right now. to all of you. I hope you had a fantastic day and you got that special cake and those beautiful presents that you wanted. And again, from all of us here at Grace Point, happy birthday. Now, boys and girls, we have to honor God. Remember, we learned that last week, always with our money. Yes, our 10% of our offering. That's right. So let's honor God right now by putting in our, our, our money into the money box. And then boys and girls, let's also remember why we do this. Not so that we can be rich and go on holidays. No, no, no. We do this so that we can stay online with you, that we can have um, a, a church face to face on a Sunday in person, and also so that we can help our community around us. So keep on being faithful with your giving. Right, are you ready to pray? Hands together, let's go. Father God, we just thank you so much that we have the privilege to always, in some way or another, give back to you. Father, I pray that it will be an amazing fragrance in your nostrils as we offer something precious to you. Father, I thank you for every family represented online and in person today. Bless them, I say. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, boys and girls, let's go and honor God with our voices. I'll see you back after that. Hi everyone and welcome back to Worship with Kezi. My name is Kezia, but you can call me Kez or Kezi. And what is your name? Well, it's really nice to meet you. And if you are here for the very first time, hi guys! I'm so glad you guys had to join us this morning. I hope you have loads of fun with us. And for all of you that have been joining us for the past couple of weeks, hi guys! I'm so glad you guys are back and I hope you guys have loads of fun as well. Today we have two songs for you and the first one is called Tell the World and the moves are really really easy. So this is how it goes. So you're gonna go tell the world that Jesus lives, tell the world that, tell the world that, tell the world that he died for them, tell the world that he lives again. And that's all you need to know for this week. So let's do it one more time, okay? So it goes, tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that, tell the world that, tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> so, are you guys ready? I can't hear you. <gasps> Perfect, let's go. I'm 
done everybody i hope you guys had as much fun as i did with that one so the second song we're going to do is let your light shine and the moves are super super easy all you're gonna do is let your light shine and you're gonna point up to jesus and you're gonna show that he's showing his light and that's all you need to know so it goes let your light shine let your light shine let your light shine and let jesus shine through you so let's do it one more time okay so it goes let your light shine let your light shine and let jesus shine through you and that's all you need to know so are you ready perfect let's go <laughs> loads of fun with that one i know i did and that's all we have for you this week on worship with kezi i hope you guys had fun this week i hope you guys keep safe this week bye guys welcome back boys and girls and welcome to another one of our stories about blossoming in god's garden sure we have learned quite a few of these tips now that i've been giving you um, and we have been just growing in god's garden so i thought we could just look at them again quickly so remember boys and girls the first one was our protea and we learned that we have to change we can't stay um, the same way we were before we knew jesus when we were doing things that we shouldn't be doing and things that weren't okay remember just like Saul, we had to change, right, boys and girls, and become Paul. And we used our protea and we planted him in our spiritual garden. And now our protea is blossoming because we are changing every week and becoming more and more like Jesus as we follow in his footsteps. And then I said to you, okay, now that we know that we have to change, how are we going to do that? And every week I've been giving you guys tips. And so the first week we learned about spiritual 
wisdom. And that was a big word. And we said, okay, don't stress about it. What it really just means is we need to read our Bibles. We need to go to church. We need to ask questions about God so that we can grow and find out what is right and what is wrong. And then we only do what is right. So that was our African violets. We have to get very wise. Then we had our third lesson. Oh, and that was our sun. Remember the sunflower and it was all about prayer. By looking into the sun, we remember that we have to talk and pray to God. And also remember the sunflowers, when the sun goes down, they turn to their friends and they talk to their friends. And in the same way, we can pray together. And do you remember what we said about prayer? We must pray all the time. We mustn't give up hope and we can pray anywhere and we must pray with humbleness. And so boys and girls, last week we learned about this beautiful little flower. And we also learned that we don't have to be this huge, big, beautiful flower to make a difference. No, no, no. We can just be like this little, little ones. They have got so much fragrance within them. So even you and I, you who are only little, you can make a difference and you can honor God. So boys and girls, so now today we are doing our next lesson. And our lesson today is going to be about our neighbors. <laughs> now, before we do that, boys and girls, um, I just thought I'll show you this beautiful flower and they are like trumpets shouting out, love your neighbor. But before we do that, and before we come back to our story, we know that this is our time. We go to the visitor's lounge and we go and listen to a tip from Auntie Jean about how to grow our real gardens. Now, I'm hoping that you have followed her, all her tips, all her advices and that your garden is starting to grow and you can see flowers coming up and little sprouts coming up. Please take photos for, to, for, and send it to liana at gracepoint.co.za and show us your garden. All right, let's go to Auntie Jean and then we'll come back and carry on with our lesson. See you now. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another um, tip for the day. What did we call them last week, Auntie Jean? Auntie Jean's, Jean's tips. tips. Ah, for our gardens. Now, boys and girls, if you've been missing our tips, you better go listen. But I'll quickly give you a rundown. Good soil. Make sure that you plant it in the right amount of sun and also the right time of the day. Now, Auntie Jean, welcome. And thank you again for doing this in your beautiful garden. What is our next step? Okay, now you have to care for your garden. Mm -hmm. So you need to add compost, which is in this bin here. You add compost to your soil and it will help feed your plants. And then when the flowers are dying off, you need to cut them off like this so that more flowers will grow on mm -hmm. to your plant. Okay. All right, so sure, guys, that you hear that, we have to get our compost to give it a little bit of more oomph, right? Mm -hmm. It can grow more. And if there's any dead leaves or flowers, yes. we just, trim. and the boys and girls, you don't do that. Oh no, you don't do that. You have to get an adult to come and help you if you want to trim them with a scissors. Otherwise they could just break them off, right? It's, yes, yes. All right, okay. So boys and girls, there we go. Another tip for our garden. I mm -hmm. think our garden should be coming along very nice now. There we go. And so, boys and girls, this week, go into that garden, work that soil with the compost, and then ask your parents or just break off all the little dead flowers and leaves. Auntie Jean, this garden of ours is going to bloom very soon and be it's beautiful, right? It's going to be lovely. All yes. right. Thank you, Auntie <laughs> Jean. See you next week. Bye, Bye everyone. Welcome back, boys and girls. <laughs> well, now Auntie Jean has given you her tips, and now it's my turn to give you another tip about how to grow in God's garden, blossom and grow in God's garden. Now today, it's all about, and the trumpet's already saying that to us, it's all about our neighbors. <laughs> we have to love our neighbors like we love ourselves. Boys and girls, you know that fragrance that Jesus loves, and he goes, oh, that's a beautiful fragrance. It also counts for today, guys. It is when, God, when we are loving our neighbors, when we care for our neighbors, when we live in peace with our neighbors, 
when we talk to our neighbors about Jesus, then he goes, wow, now you're really blossoming in my garden. So boys and girls, our flowers for today is a whole bunch. So it's like a, a beautiful uh, uh, um, uh, a bouquet or a, or a vase full of flowers. So I've got a rose for love. I have cosmos for peace. I have the daisy, which is like our talking plant. Hey, he says, I agree. Yes, yes. It's, I hear your sentiments. I share your sentiments. That's our daisy. And then we also have our bluebells and they are our caring flowers. So boys and girls, I want you to imagine that today we are just filling up our garden, God's garden with all these different flowers that shows us peace, love, caring, and just talking to our neighbors about Jesus. Now, let's start from the beginning now. So firstly, let's go and see what the Bible tells us about our neighbors. Are you ready? We find this scripture in John. Oh, this wind is closing my Bible. Don't do that. <laughs> in John 13 verse 34, listen to what the Bible tells us. This is what Jesus says. I give you a new commandment. Love each other. You must love each other um, as I have loved you. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. Wow, boys and girls, that is an amazing scripture. So here is it, boys and girls. This is the tip. Love each other. Not just the neighbor that you like to hang out with. No, everybody is our neighbor. Everyone, even though our enemies are our neighbors and we have to love them. And people will know that we love God if we love people around us. And you know what, boys and girls, Jesus showed us how to do that. You know how he showed us how much he loves us? You know, he died on the cross for us. He suffered, guys. He was hurt and, and he bled to show us how much he loves us because he doesn't want us to remain here on earth. No, he's saying, you know what? Firstly, I'm going to take away all the things and I'm going to change you inside out. And then when you die and you go home, you're not just going to go nowhere. You're going to come to heaven where I am. How amazing is that, boys and girls? So Jesus showed us. And then he said when he, when he rose from the dead, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I might not be here now to tell you what to do, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And boys and girls, that's exactly what he did. Our helper, the Holy Spirit, comes and it teaches us how to love our neighbor. And we've just finished our series about the fruit of the Spirit. Do you all remember? And it was about loving our neighbors, living in peace with our neighbors, being patient, being kind, being gentle, being, having self-control around our neighbors. Those are all the things that the Holy Spirit helps us with to love our neighbors. And then, boys and girls, Jesus showed us in the Bible how to care and also love our neighbors. And you know what he did? He did. You know how he did that? Well, boys and girls, when people were hungry, he fed them. When they were sick, he healed them. Boys and girls, there was even a time where a friend at a wedding ran out of wine and he said, oh, I'll help you. And he changed water into wine. Even that was important. That's another way how Jesus shows us how to care for our neighbors. And you know what the Bible tells us, boys and girls? Jesus said, if you do anything for your neighbors, it's like you are doing it for me. And I'm going to read you that scripture. And it says, I'm going to read it to you. It says in Matthew 25 verse 45 then he says I tell you the truth anything you either refuse to do for any of these people here you refused to do for me which means the opposite boys if boys and girls if I tell you whatever you have done for me for them you have done for me so in the Bible it says if you refuse to do good to people if you refuse to care for people if you ref refuse to live in peace and love people your neighbors then you are also refusing to love and to care and, and honor me and we don't want to do that no we want to do the opposite we want to say wow Jesus to say you know what? You did this for them. You cared for them. You prayed for them. You took them food when they were sick. You did this for me. And that's what I want us to talk about today, boys and girls, is that caring. 
And you know, I want us to go to the storybook corner and we are going to listen to three stories today. Let's first go to the first one where Jesus shows us that we should care for those who are sick. And you know what, boys and girls? Jesus wasn't even there when this little boy was healed. And <laughs> he just said, let it be healed. And so, boys and girls, all we have to do is to pray for other people to be healed. And just like this little boy we're going to learn about, he was healed, even though Jesus wasn't even there. Let's go and listen to our story about the little boy who was healed. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to my story about the nobleman's sick son. We find this story in John 4 in the New Testament. An important man had a very, very sick son. He heard that Jesus was in the next town and went to ask him to come and see his son and make him well. Jesus, please, my boy is very sick. Please, please come to my house and do a miracle. I know if you come to see him, you can make my boy better before it is too late, cried the man. Go back home. Your son is well. I don't need to come to your house. Just believe what I say, said Jesus. It was one o'clock when Jesus said this to the man. The man hurried home. He believed that Jesus really had made his son better and that what Jesus had told him was true. When he got to his house, he saw his son waiting at the door. He was not sick anymore. <gasps> the man was so happy to see his boy. What time did he feel better? Asked the man. It was one o'clock when he suddenly felt better. He got out of his bed and felt completely well. <gasps> The man again was so happy. He believed in Jesus with all his heart and he told everyone how Jesus had made his son well without even coming to see him. The end. Welcome back, boys and girls. Do you see, in a lot of the Bible stories, we, listen, we learn about how Jesus physically went and prayed for people and they were healed. But in this story, Jesus wasn't even there. Just the faith and the prayer of people healed it, healed that little boy. And so let's remember that. We can pray and have faith when we ask for people to be, uh, Jesus to heal people. And then I want us to now go to a story about how Jesus felt sorry for people who were hungry. And you know what, boys and girls? <laughs> this is an amazing story because a little boy brought stuff, brought food and said, well, this is what I have. Maybe you can feed these 5,000 people. But this little boy had so much faith that his contribution, that what he brought could make a difference. And so let's go and listen to that story. Hello boys and girls and welcome to my story about Jesus feeding more than 5,000 people. We find this story in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John in the New Testament. Now the disciples had just returned from going around villages telling people about Jesus and healing the sick. Jesus and his disciples got in a boat and sailed to a quiet place. A large crowd Many of them, on their way to the Passover feast in Jerusalem, watched the boat and followed it around the coast on foot to meet Jesus. Jesus went up into the hills and taught them. He also spent time healing the sick. There were around 5,000 men in the crowd, plus women and children. Late in the afternoon, the disciples asked Jesus, to send the crowd away to nearby farms and villages to find food and place to stay for the night. There is nothing to eat here in this deserted spot, they told Jesus. But Jesus replied, I want you to feed them. Turning to Philip, he asked, Philip, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? 
<laughs> Philip replied, it would take a fortune to feed this many people. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and a couple of fish. But what good is that with all these mouths to feed? Tell everyone to sit down in groups of around 50, Jesus ordered. Jesus then took the five loaves and two fish, looked up into the sky and gave thanks. Then he broke off pieces for his disciples to give to the crowd. The disciples gave out the bread and fish and everybody ate until they were no longer hungry. The disciples even picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. Then Jesus told the disciples to get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After Jesus had sent the crowds away, he went up on a hillside by himself to pray. The end. Welcome back, boys and girls. I just love that. 5,000 people, just men, and that even the woman that was counted had their tummies filled and there was even leftovers. Just because a little boy had faith and brought what he had. And now, boys and girls, there's one little story that I thought we could end off, which is a fun story. And that is where Jesus is at a wedding. And I told you, even thing, little things like that is important for Jesus is to actually really support our neighbors in any way. Not just when they're sick or when they're needy. No, go and visit your neighbor and have fun with your neighbors and, and, and care for them in that way. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they just need somebody to talk to. And so let's go and listen to how Jesus Jesus turned a miracle water into wine. Hello boys and girls and welcome to my story about Jesus goes to a wedding. We find this story in the book of John in the New Testament. Now there was going to be a wedding in the town of Cana. Everyone was busy getting things ready. The bride and groom invited their family and friends. Jesus, his mother, and his helpers were coming too. The bride looked beautiful. There was plenty to eat and drink. Everyone filled their glasses with wine made from grape juice. Best wishes for a happy life, they said. But oh no, soon the wine had run out. Everyone was asking for more. The servants were worried. This would spoil the party. What could they do? Jesus' mother said, Oh, Jesus, please help. Then she said, Do what he tells you to do. Jesus told them, Fill those big jars with water. They did everything Jesus told them to do. They filled six big jars right to the top with water. When they poured the water into the glasses, oh my goodness, it became wine. It was a miracle. The people at the party had never tasted such a delicious drink. They all had a happy time at the wedding. Only the servants and helpers knew Jesus had turned the water into wine. Now, boys and girls, wherever Jesus goes, he knows how to care, love, and bless people. And you know what? He can give us the very best life ever. The end. Welcome back, boys and girls. So there we go. So we can care for our neighbors in so many ways. And when we do that, remember what we read in the Bible today? When we do that, we are doing it for Jesus. And then lastly, boys and girls, it is Jesus wants us to talk to our neighbors about him. Just before he went up into heaven, he said, go and tell the world. Now, boys and girls, if we go and tell those people who don't know Jesus and they get to know Jesus and their life changes and they follow all the tips to grow in God's garden, 
Sure, boys and girls, that's when Jesus says, that's it. You know what? That's amazing. Look how you are blossoming. You are doing exactly what I need you to do. So boys and girls, let's not forget to go out there and tell people what Jesus has done for us. Why we are changed. Why we pray. Why we go to church. Why we read our Bibles. Why we honor God. And why we serve and and care and love for others. Because of Jesus and what he has done for us and God's love as he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us and the Holy Spirit who lives in us and guides us and chose us and we can ask him anything and he will help us. So boys and girls, this week, every time you see a bouquet of flowers or you see different blossoms on the tree or you see roses or you see any flower like this one, let it be like a trumpet shouting out. Let it be known to everybody that we love God and we love our neighbors. Now, boys and girls, next week is our last lesson for blossoming in, in, in God's garden. So please don't miss out as we finish off our series. I'm looking so forward to seeing you next week. Bless you all and let's zoom to the Doodle Studio where we're going to do amazing craft. boys and girls and welcome back and hello to Vicky. Hello Vix, you look so gorgeous today. <laughs> now Vix, before we start, what must we remember? How to doodle it. Just doodle it, doodle kids. Right, let's go see what um, Vicky has got for us. Oh, she's doing the craft on feeding the hungry. Remember boys and girls from our story? The little boy who brought five loaves and two fish so that he could care for others because remember our whole story today is about caring loving others our neighbors now let's see what we need to do is we first need to go to the doodle studio um, in on our kids web page and find these two pages um, they are I'm gonna ask you just to lift them up for us it's the five loaves and two fishes and our basket we also need a pair of scissors some glue and some coloring in if you are not going to print it on color. All right, so the very first thing that we always do, and and Vicky's already done that for us, boys and girls, she has cut everything out for us. Now, we have printed our little um, uh, basket on color, and there is the other. So now we're not gonna do anything with the five loaves and two fishes right now. I'm just gonna show you guys how we are going to make our basket. Now, if you look closely, and I'm gonna ask Bright to just zoom in, There are some um, dot-to-dot lines there. Now on those lines, we want you to cut the lines, but on the solid lines, we are just going to fold. So look carefully what Vicky's doing. She's cutting on the dot-to-dot lines. That's right, on both sides. There we go. And then guys, we are going to turn our picture around because we want our pattern that you got on both sides, Vicky. I think you missed one. Ah, she missed one. There we go. All right. So, boys and girls, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it around because we want our pattern of our box on the outside. So, now what I want you to do is, is just to go and fold your box all around on the dark black line like um, Vicky is doing. There we go, all the way. We're not going to put it together yet. We're just folding on the black lines. Don't forget the corners also need to be folded. Everywhere we need to fold it. I think Vicky's going to come back and she's going to fold her corners at the end. There we go, all the way around. Okay, and then... Just remember also the ends need to be tucked in as well. Beautiful. Now what we're going to do is once we are finished with this, boys and girls, we are going to take the two corners and we are going to wrap it around the outside of the box. So we're going to lift that one up and tuck it around. There we go. And we're going to stick it down 
So Vicky's just going to do it. We're not going to stick it now because we've already figured that we could just quickly do your box. There you go. And on the other side. Now, please just stick those down with glue, boys and girls. And then there is your little box complete. Okay. Now what you need to do as boys and girls is to go and color in your fish and your loaves of bread. Now, look, Vicky has done all of that for us. I'm just going to ask. Um, there we go. Let's get all our finished product. There we go. Look at that. Vicky has cut. Uh, she's now folded and done a beautiful box that is stuck together. And she's colored in the five loaves and the two fish. Now, remember what the little boy did, boys and girls? He brought the box or his basket with his lunch, which was five loaves. Let's pop the five loaves in. There we go. Popping the five loaves in. And we are going to pop in the two little fish. And there we have our little boy's lunch that he, is, that he brought to Jesus. And Jesus did a miracle and produced 12 extra baskets of fish and, and, and bread. So boys and girls, remember, how can we grow and blossom in God's garden? By caring for our neighbors, by giving them food. Jesus showed us that that was so important for him as well. All right, boys and girls, thank you. Let's say goodbye to Vicky for today. All right, boys and girls, let's say goodbye to Vicky. Bye, Vix. We'll see you next week. Are we guys ready to go to our next craft with Lolo? See you there. Bye. Welcome back, boys and girls. Hello, Lolo. <laughs> All right, let's go have a look what we have down at the bottom for. Oh, Lolo's doing the one about the official whose son was ill and who Jesus healed without going to their house. Okay, so what do we need for this graph? First, you're going to go to the Doodle Studio and find those two um, pictures on the kids' webpage. Then we need a pair of scissors. We need um, some glue and we need um, some coloring in pencils. All right, so the first thing we always know what to do, and Lolo's already done that for us, is to go and cut out our pictures. Oh, Lolo forgot to cut out the frame picture, but that's okay, you guys can do that. Right, boys and girls, now that Lolo has cut out Jesus and the official, she has now gone and she's got already a finished little picture there. She has gone and stuck it. Now remember there, Jesus shows the official, go back home because your child is already healed. And remember what I said to you guys in the lesson. We, just like us, we just keep on praying. Just keep on praying for people who are sick. That's how we care for them. And then um, Jesus in his right time will heal them. So there we go. Can you see that? Now we have a little surprise for you. On the back of our picture, Lolo, can you turn it around? Oh, there is another picture. And that is the official returning home and sees that his son is better. Now, this is not just any picture, boys and girls. If you look at there are some shapes at the end of the bed. Now, you can go and find them. They are hidden all over the bedroom. I hope you find them. All right, let's just zoom back quickly. Go to the front again. So remember, Jesus says to the official, your faith has already healed your son. And then when the official got home, his son was better. And boys and girls, that's another way how we can care for our neighbors is to pray for them and believe God for healing. And remember, boys and girls, Jesus showed us, we're following in his footsteps, how he knew that um, praying and healing people was a very important thing to do. Well, boys and girls, that's this craft. Let's go to our next one. Welcome back, boys and girls. Right, let's do our final craft for today. We have to do something for our spiritual garden. And as you all know, roses are for love. And um, so we decided that we are going to make a rose today. That's going to be interesting. So guys, if you go to the Doodle Studio on the webpage, kids webpage, you will find this easy rose cutout. Now, you can print as many as you want on soft color paper, or you can color in the circles all by yourself in different colors. 
you can do whatever you want. And then we also need to have a pair of scissors, obviously. We need um, a, a pipe cleaner, huh? And we need to have some glue and some coloring in pencils if you are going to color in your own rows. Right, so the very first thing we do, and Lolo's already done that for us, she's cut out the spirals for us. So boys and girls, you just follow the black inner and outer lines. Um, and then you see it will look like a little coil, like a snake. There you go. Lolo's having fun playing there with her coil. Okay, so what we then do is you take your um, first coil and you start rolling it all the way in to the very end. Tight little roll. Don't go too tight and not too soft. So um, you can see Lolo's rolling it beautifully. She's not making it too big, but she's also not making it too tight. So there we go. She's just going to keep on rolling and rolling until she gets to the end. Okay, so boys and girls, look there. Now you can see there's an X at the bottom. Now, boys and girls, what you need to do is, is ask somebody, no, not you, someone else who can, um, maybe a parent or a guardian, to just push a little hole through. And there you're going to push your little um, uh, pipe cleaner through. Right, boys and girls, push your little um, pipe cleaner right through. Push it right through till you see it at the top. And then, boys and girls, look what you have. A beautiful, beautiful rose. And look what Vil uh, Lolo has done with all hers. Ah, oh, she's made a whole little bouquet. Oh, that's beautiful, Lolo. And look at that, boys and girls. You can make as many roses as you like. Remember, the tighter you roll it, the more smaller rows you'll get. If you don't roll it too tight, the bigger rows you will get. That is beautiful. Wow. Now, Lolo, thank you very much. Let's go say goodbye to Lolo. Lolo, you have done a beautiful rose today. You are our rose. <laughs> right, boys and girls? Let's say goodbye to Lolo. Bye. And remember, just how to doodle it. Just doodle it, doodle kids.